Hi, hello everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Fernando, I work for Metallo and my presentation is about augmented reality. I think you already have a, a bit knowledge about it if you are here. So this is me, I'm Fernando and I work for Metallo. Uh, I joined Metallo team a um, year and a half ago uh, and I developed the, uh, an application from Metallo, which is called Junayo, it's an augmented reality browser, and I developed the Android version. Uh, that's my Twitter, if you want to ask me later some questions or whatever, and my contact email. Uh, so who we are? Metallo is a company that develops augmented reality uh, technology, and uh, they provide their own SDK. It was founded like 10 years ago in 2003, and since then they have been providing solutions for uh, different fields, like it could be uh, industrial, automotive, uh, marketing, uh, publishing, all of them, uh, they provide augmented reality uh, solutions to incorporate to these uh, fields of these markets. It is now 100 employees. Uh, we have three offices now, one in San Francisco, one in Munich, where I work, and another new one in Dallas, Texas. Um, uh, there are like 1,000 apps powered by the Metallo SDK, which I will introduce to you later. And we had like over 30 million consumers using our software. So if you are here, you have probably heard about augmented reality at some point in your life. A uh, quick definition of augmented reality is like overlaying virtual information and contextual information on top of real world images and usually on real time. This means that you are watching a real object or a real environment through a camera and at the same time you are seeing information that is related, is contextual to what, are you, what you are seeing through this camera. And it also provides uh, extra information. Like uh, in this case, you see the car, but at the same time you can see a 3D model of the pieces of the car, so you could interact with them. So augmented reality has um, many fields of application. Uh, I'm going to expose some of them, but here you can see some samples. Uh, on the right side, we did a, a an application, or we did an experience with uh, TV show. At some point in the show, they uh, prompted the users watching the show from their homes with some questions, with some, uh, yeah, some interaction with the TV program. So the user could hold their phone or their device to the TV, and they will see augmented reality. In this case, a questionnaire that they could um, answer the questions from their device. As the, at the same time as the show was going on. There are uh, also uh, hardware installations uh, down there where users can go to this display and they can show a box, in this case a Lego box, then they could see the uh, toy already mounted on the display in you know, augmented reality on top of the box. So then the they can increase their sales because, you know, if the kid shows this to, the, to their parents, the parents will have to buy it, you know. The kids will fall in love with this toy and seeing it mounted and animated and they will see how they can play it with it later and then they have to buy it. So there are some different uh, types of augmented reality. One of them is the location-based uh, augmented reality. This means that the device is aware of the location of the user in the world. So it can display um, information that is here located or information that you know that it's in that place and you can show it to the user because you know where it's him. So it's usually you can, you are familiar with this. You can see uh, different uh, important places in your city or different uh, bus stops. In this case, this information is dynamic, so you can prompt the server and retrieve the, what are the bus uh, timings. So it's not 
bounded to a static information, but it could be also dynamic. In this case, there is an Intel um, showroom, so you can see around you where are the rooms, where are the sessions, where are the places. Down there, they are location-based. You can see articles from Wikipedia, which are geolocated. You can see uh, restaurants. But it's not only these balloons with information. It can be also uh, 3D models, uh, arrows pointing you where to go. Um, any kind of content that is location-based, it can be displayed also to the user through the camera. And there was a, a nice, a nice uh, application made in Japan using this location base. I'm going to show you a video now, so you can see that it's not only balloons displaying text or distance, but it's also uh, a fun way to engage users to, to do something. I will show you the video now, if it works. How could you ever find a 35-year-old aquarium here? There are so many thousands of things to do. Even worse, the aquarium is almost a kilometer from the station. But that was our job. We had to attract the visitors to the aquarium and make sure they could find it. Idea! Let penguins bring people to the aquarium. So we created GPS penguins. By using AR, GPS penguins will show you the way to the aquarium. So cute! People can't help but to follow them. What an amazing sense of road direction. We human beings are magically drawn to cute animals. Human instincts mean new technology. It was a world first. Motion capture technology applied to penguins. Our GPS penguins walk exactly like real penguins. Genuine penguin movement. Result. Mobile phones change boring point-to-point -point travel into entertainment. Just follow the penguins. You won't notice other distractions. You'll arrive at the aquarium before you know it. Look. People continue coming today with this app. GPS penguins were a hot topic in many media. Penguins brought not only people, but also smiles. So amazing, isn't it? So these people had the problem that they wanted to attract more people to their aquarium. And what they did is just this application, uh, they used these penguins to uh, make people uh, willing to go there. And actually, it worked really well. So as you can see, there's not only balloons, but these funny penguins brought people to the, to the aquarium. So the fun fact about this uh, this uh, experience is that uh, they did it um, without us knowing anything. So we saw an increase of uh, usage in Japan. And we were wondering why. And we found out that this, there was this campaign there. And we got in, in touch with them. And they explained it to us. And we have a couple of colleagues traveling to Tokyo just to meet them and to see how they did it. And it was quite. Amazing. So you can use augmented reality to engage people to do what uh, you need to actually, in this case, to solve a problem you had. So another field of augmented reality is uh, industry. It's also very important uh, and very useful to, to see things in a visual way. So you can have uh, augmented reality to help you in engineering or industry with machines. So you can um, measure pieces, or you can measure the, uh, yeah, the pieces that you are making, and use the augmented reality to display how it will it look at the end, where are the weak points, so to, uh, 
you can display all the tubes or the insides of a door. So you can use a high precision augmented reality to display this information that if you can see it visually, it will be easier to understand. Also, another uh, usage of augmented reality, and in this case, is not only applied to 2D images, but you can also display augmented reality on 3D objects. And this is quite useful for uh, interactive, con um, interactive manuals, sorry, where, to be honest, for me, I have been a long time ago since the last time I used a m printed manual to see how something works. And I think that people usually, they don't read a 500 pages manual to see how, how something works. So in this way, people can uh, have their object, then fire an application, and the application will tell them how to use it. Uh, you can track the physical object in your home, use your uh, smartphone and see what uh, instructions, where are the things that you have to operate, where to plug the cables, uh, what uh, does this light mean. In this case, there is a printer and we use augmented reality to tell the user how to replace the ink cartridge. So there are some steps, a um, few steps, the user can say, OK, I've done this step, what's the next? And the animation will change and will tell the user, OK, uh, now pull this uh, label, pull this trigger, then replace it, etc. There is another uh, application that made use of this kind of interactive manuals. It was Audi. I have another video to show you. In this case, you can recognize part of the vehicle just with uh, your smartphone. But it's not only the lights or the controls, but you can also track your engine, which is in real as a 3D object. And uh, you can see where the things are, where do you have to um, refill the coolant or do whatever you want. And even though the even if the engine gets dirty, its it shapes its shape doesn't change, so it will still work. So it's not related to the texture, but to the shape of the object in in real 3D. Another uh, widely successful uh, use case is the printed media. So with a technology that can track images and display content about these images, the printed media is the perfect medium to display at, to add this augmented reality. Uh, content on top of it. So you can have your magazines, they can, you can display information related to the article, like a movie trailer, a 3D object, a 3D monster. If your magazine is about photography, you can display the camera models in 3D so the user can see them from any angle. They can operate it, they can just explore, and it's much more engaging than a simple playing page. So this is an augmented reality success story. There is a magazine, which was the first mobile AR magazine in 2010. It was the Sudoichi Seito magazine. And now in Germany, there are more than 15 million magazines 
that contains augmented reality and they are published every month only in Germany. So imagine the opportunity you have here to enhance different magazines in other countries. So IKEA, uh, last year they published their catalog. I think everybody knows IKEA, right? Uh, they had a catalog where you can, where you were able to see the, some of the furniture they sell in 3D over the catalog. But in the catalog for next year, they also have uh, functionality that lets you see how a furniture will fit into your living room or your house just by dropping the magazine in the ground, firing the application, and then interacting with it, moving the furniture around, and then you can see and take a picture of how will it be, and then order the, the furniture to your home. IKEA is quite uh, spread in the world. They had 211 uh, million copies worldwide in 48 languages, so imagine the reach it has. Uh, the application they made, it was downloaded more than 8.5 million times by August. And this augmented reality is powered by our Metallo SDK and our company. So this is the video. So please don't jump into virtual objects. So this is great because you know the IKEA catalog has uh, a standard size. And when you track this magazine, you know the real size. So you can display the models in a perfect scale. So you won't buy the, the sofa and it will be larger or smaller than you thought. In this case, it will be the exact same size. So what are the products that Metallo offers? for you developers to create these applications or this content and uh, yeah, to develop, to distribute, and to engage your users. So there is Junayo on top. Junayo is an application based on the Metallo SDK. It's uh, an augmented reality browser. Imagine that it's the Firefox or the Chrome for augmented reality. So it's not uh, a standalone application that does something, but it is used to load content and experiences made by people. The same way people do web pages, and Chrome displays these web pages, Junayo displays augmented reality content made by people who create this content. And instead of web pages, we call them channels. Then is the Metallo SDK is the base where Junayo is uh, built on, on top. And this provides all the functionality of the image tracking, image rendering, uh, interaction. And it also has a plugin for network. So you can store your content into the cloud and load it into the SDK and display it. So the application won't be like 200 megabytes that uh, the user has to download, it could be uh, streamed from the cloud. And then there is Metallo Creator. This is an application for Windows and Mac. And uh, this is an authoring tool 
to create the, this experience visually. I will try to do a demo later, but you can uh, import the images or the magazine covers or whatever you want to use for tracking, like in 2D tracking or also 3D maps tracking. Um, you can load it into the application, and then by drag and drop, you can place models, place videos, uh, place links, and everything from a visual way, which is really easy to deploy something in like five minutes. So the SDK works uh, on iOS, on Android, and Windows. Hope, thanks God, you don't need to a special hardware to use it. It's just an SDK that you can install, and it's a library that you can use with Xcode or Eclipse or IntelliJ or whatever you use for developing. It has the most advanced recognition of uh, 2D and 3D objects, as, as I said. It also features a SLAM recognition and visual search technology, meaning that you can um, find the content by the image instead of firing the content, firing the channel first or firing the application first and then loading the content. Visual search means that it can search directly into the pattern and it will fire the correct content that it's bound to this uh, image that you are trying to scan. And it also is, uh, is in charge of the rendering in OpenGL and it also has a plugin for Unity 3D in case you use it. Uh, Junayo, as I said, is a browser. You can download it for Google Play and for iOS, um, for Android and iPhone or iPad. And it's when you fire it, it will show you a home channel where you can see uh, location-based information, but you can also use it to uh, scan another, um, another pattern to find another content, or you can also search through different channels that are related to your current location, like Wikipedia or Instagram photos around you or Twitter tweets that are occurring around you. So if you install it now, you can probably see Instagram pictures taken by another campuseros here during the week. And this is the creator interface. As I said, it's easy creation of content. You can use it for 2D or 3D objects. You don't need to develop. This is important that you can create a scene without any knowledge of development, of development which is great for marketing teams that they don't have a developer. They can just uh, do their compositions and publish it without any developer involved. Actually, this is bad for us, I guess. <laughs> but once you are developed and deploy this content, you can load it uh, into the SDK and you can change it. You can create an interface for it and you can still alter it if you are required to do so. And it also integrates with Google Analytics so you can have a tracking of the um, interactions and loadings and content that it's being used. So talking about development, uh, you can do in two ways. You can do it natively for iOS, for Android, and for Windows. I forgot to add the logo. Or you can develop cross-platform in using Arial. Arial it's uh, an augmented reality experience language. Actually, it's a mix of JavaScript, uh, XML static content, and HTML5. So it's like uh, a JavaScript version of the, of the Metaio SDK that you can use almost all functions that you could do natively. You can do them in JavaScript. You can manipulate the geometries, and you can fire the animations of the, of, of the models or the videos. You can access the low-level tracking values and sensor values. So in case you need to do something more advanced or something that is not supported, you still have the values so you can develop your own uh, renderer or tracking or whatever you need. And it also provides callbacks for uh, tracking events, media events, 3D models, or sensors, meaning that if something happens into the rendering or the tracking, you will be noticing JavaScript so you can respond accordingly. The idea behind Arial is that you don't need to develop natively for iOS or Android. 
you can develop in JavaScript, and then it will work on both platforms using the base uh, SDK. So the SDK will take care of uh, the internal part, but you can do all the interaction with JavaScript. This works with Junio uh, on Android and iOS, and it works with the SDK also on Android, iOS, and Windows. And this integrates great with another uh, JavaScript libraries like jQuery or Sept.js or other JavaScript libraries that run on mobile. You can also integrate and use them. So how does RL work? There is the Metaio SDK uh, on, on the base that provides the rendering, tracking, and camera things. There is the HTML5 layer on top of it. And there is a JavaScript library that we provide that is like the glue between the HTML web view and the, uh, the base uh, SDK. And there is also a static content definition in XML that provides with the, uh, the page that has to be loaded. It tells you which models do you have to load uh, or do you want to load the initial properties or transformations. I will try to explain now. Yeah, this is the XML. At the beginning, you have the HTML file that you want to load into the view on top of the camera. Then you have a list of object definitions. In this case, there is a, it's an object identified as tiger, that, so you can reference it later. Below is the model. In this case, it's a 3D model with a texture. So this is the path where the model is stored in the device. There is an initial transformation, but of course you can then later interact with it and you can change its rotation, its translation, its scale. You can change its properties from JavaScript once it's loaded. And there are the coordinate system ID. So in case you have many models and many patterns to track, you can uh, assign like a coordinate system ID, which is like a group. So you can display different models, but not at the same time, but at different times. So this is the HTML5 layer. Actually, it's just a web page. You load the RLGS, which is the bridge we use to interact with the native uh, SDK. Then you add your application logic in JavaScript, and below is your user interface. So it's all developed in HTML and JavaScript. So your interface could be divs, or it could be spans, or it could be H any HTML content. This is how the logic.js file looks, but you can fill it with many more uh, functions there. In this case, this is the error.steam ready. This is called when all the assets and configuration has been loaded. So you get a notification in JavaScript that the, and the, that the environment is ready to operate. Think of it like the DOM ready in HTML when everything is loaded and you can start doing things in JavaScript. In this case, is the scene ready. So you can start getting the object that you loaded and setting another property there. In this case, it's uh, the scale. And uh, you change the scale by factor of two. Then you can add the listeners. So in this case, you have a listener. You are setting up a listener to uh, get notification about the tracking. If the user is tracking the image, you get a notification. If the tracking is lost because the user is pointing to something else, then you get another notification. So you can warn the user, please point the camera to this image so you can continue operating or you can continue enjoying the stream. In the case you want to go native, uh, you have to set a tracking configuration this tracking configuration is an XML file, which is actually really scary. But we have some templates at the website, so you can just download it and use the same or just customize the parts you need. So I'm not going to show it here because it's a lot of properties that you don't really need to know about. This is the basic method you need to, to do when you start. So you load the tracking configuration. Then, as I said, it can have the predefined uh, uh, models or textures. But it also works when you need to do a location-based. There is a constant, there is GPS, for instance, that you can 
load with the same method, and it will fire the location-based and sensor tracking. You can also use it to scan barcodes or QR codes to do something else. These are the kind of tracking configuration that you can load. You can load these uh, fiducial markers, which are these markers with a black uh, box around them that, that are easy to track and quite fast. You can also uh, track barcodes or scan barcodes. You can use sensor-based uh, tracking, like the GPS or the orientation. The orientation, for instance, is used when you want to display a 360 degrees place, like, I don't know, the inside of a stadium or inside a museum or something that you can see around. Then you move your device, and you can see uh, this view. And it's using this orientation sensor. Then there is the markerless tracking. That could be, as I said, 2D with images or 3D. To create a 3D tracking, you need an external application called Metaio Toolbox that creates the map, the 3D map. Then you can load it into the Metaio SDK or the creator and then start doing things with it. And there is the dummy tracking and in case you need to do something, something else that is not supported, but it has to load, to load something. And there is the instant tracking where you don't have any pa predefined pattern, but you can create one on the fly Let's say that I have a picture and I want to create a model on top of it, and then I just snap the picture and I can see the model even if it was not pre-configured. There's also 2D with gravity, meaning that the picture you take is corrected using the sensor device. So you can uh, take a picture not in parallel of the object, but uh, with perspective, and it will guess the gravity and it will place the model correctly. And there is also a 3D slam, which as I said is scanning the 3D object. You can turn around the object so you can detect the points, the feature points, and then create a map on the fly also. So once you have a tracking configuration defined, then you have to load a uh, geometry that could be a 3D model. In this case, the picture is a 3D model. It could be an image, but this image has to be on a plane, a 3D plane. So you can create a plane from the image. It could be also a movie. You can interact with movies. You can play and, and stop the movies directly from the SDK. Or you, if you have uh, models with uh, reflections, then you can also load an environment map. The content types you can load as a geometry are these uh, are billboards, for instance, which are these balloons with information. It could be 2D geometries like video images or a 360 degrees view. It could be 3D models, or it could be uh, this radar, which is on usually on top of the screen that shows where are the location-based information is placed around the user. So once you have uh, a geometry loaded, and the first line, it could be a 3D model. The second line is a image, then a plane or a, yeah, a movie. Then you can operate with this geometry. Then you set the translation, you set the scale, you set the rotation. Uh, you can alter these properties. Um, then you can add interaction. So in this case, you can uh, react to user touches. You know when the user is touching it, is starting to touch, or it's released if, if his finger from the object, so you can play different animations, you can load different content, you can do any interaction with the touch screen. This can be also done in RL, you set a listener, and this listener receives the information of the event with predefined constant, and then fire the animation down there of the object you previously load. In case you want to do location-based, uh, you use the GPS constant as the tracking configuration, and then you load these uh, geometries, in this case are these balloons, where you can provide uh, text, uh, you can provide a thumbnail image, you can provide a description text, or you also define the location of the billboard, so the user will see them around it. So in this method, Whenever you receive a location update from the device, 
it will set the location of the object uh, accordingly. Or in case you want to move it manually, then you can set the translation using LLA coordinate. If you are using the uh, 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 location base, you probably want to add a radar so the user is aware of how many objects are around him. So in this case, you create a radar, you set the texture you want to use for this radar, uh, you can set the texture for the dots where the information is placed, and then you can uh, place a position on the screen where you want to place the, the radar, and then you add the geometries. So you can customize the look and feel on the native side, but unfortunately in Arial you cannot change it. And instant tracking is really easy to then you set the what kind of instant tracking you want. If you want instant 2D, 2D with gravity, or the instance 3D. And then you will receive the the status of the tracking events all the time. And the visual search is the a way you can use to recognize uh, the pattern before loading it. So you can search on a database of images. If you have many images or many patterns, you can search on a database uh, what is the, which is the correct tracking configuration you need for this image. So you create the callback, you define the callback, and you request a visual search. Then this is done on the cloud. So actually, you need the network to use this. And once the result is, is available, it will be notified with the visual search result. And you will get the tracking configuration you need for, the, for this pattern you are trying to, to, to find. And there is also a method that, that you can poll all the time to see what's the state of the request you just made. And the Metallo Creator is, as I said, is an authoring tool. It's uh, AC creation experience. You don't need to program. And I will try to show you a demo now on the computer to see, to let you know, or you can see how easy it is to develop or create an experience real quick. So this is the creator interface. Here. You can add an image that will be your pattern. As you can see, you can use image tracking 3D objects or tracking even an environment, which could be a building or a monument or a corridor. So I set the image. I load, for instance, this image that I will use as a pattern to display augmented content on top of it. So here you can see the scene in 3D. Then on the right side, you have uh, which kind of resource you can add. You can add 3D models, images. You can play uh, sound files, movies, link to YouTube, place buttons, whatever you need. So in this case, I'm going to load uh, a 3D model. This model is placed on the coordinate system. So you can alter these properties. You can rotate it using the interface. Or you can alter the properties here, like increasing the scale. Uh, I want to play an animation uh, when the model is displayed. I want another animation when I touch it. So this will be my, st my stream. Then on the right side, you can uh, upload this uh, experience, this content. You can upload it to the Medallo Cloud, or you can use your own FTP or web hosting to host this, uh, this experience. In this case, I'm going to create a new channel in the Medallo Cloud. You have to define a channel name, the description, and thumbnail, and analytics ID is optional. You can choose here my server or the Metallo server. And this is free. You have a limited space, but you can uh, try experiences, experiences here. And once it works, you can use your own server, or you can buy more space. So now this is uploaded into the cloud. 
And now I will switch to the device to see how I can load this, uh, this experience right on my phone using the Junayo application. Can you see it? So this is Junayo. This is the home channel. Actually, they are <laughs> the billboards are all grouped there. You can switch to the scan view and scan a QR code that the Metallo creator just showed you. And now it's loading experience. Let me just check the. Oh. I need a pattern. <laughs> so here's the pattern I just uh, opened. And you can see the experience that is working right away. I uh, scan the QR code. I could also scan the image. And it will fire the proper channel. And it will display the uh, augmented experience just right away. So I can touch it, and it will display another animation as I told it to do on the creator. So I think we are running out of time. But uh, you can use uh, Metaio Toolbox to create a 3D map. The Metaio Toolbox is uh, an application for Android or an iPhone that you can use to um, create a 3D map. This map can be loaded into the creator the same way. You will see a point cloud, and you can place your models inside this point cloud. You can upload it to the Metaio cloud or to your own server, and it will work exactly the same, but with a 3D object instead of just an image. So for me, this is working like magic. As the Arthur C. Clarke said, this any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable, is indistinguishable from magic. So for me, I'm into reality, to having this content and this experience. And I think not for me as a developer, because I know how it works, but for many people, it, was, it will be like, just like magic. So we are hosting an event in Munich in October. This is called Inside the R. We, we will showcase many more applications and many more uh, products, and we will have uh, different uh, talks and keynotes from people. You can check the website in metayo.com slash insideyar, and you can, if you are interested, you can book the tickets, and you will see the, the schedule and all, all, all the content that we will have this year. This is contact information. We are hiring people, so if you are interested in work in augmented reality, we can provide you with free beer also. So I think it's quite engaging. So send us, a, drop us an email or contact us. And we will see if you are interested in working with us. Then just get in touch. So if you have any questions that I can answer. Yep. Hi, thanks for the talk. Really thanks. cool to see the demos and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been using another augmented reality software for about maybe 12 months now. You're probably familiar with it, Orasma. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they have things like click-throughs and overlays. Has this got a similar kind of um, uh, functions as well, or is it something you plan to have soon? What do you mean, of overlays? Like uh, Yeah, so when you uh, scan the triggers, mm -hmm. um, it will present um, options on the screen mm -hmm. um, that's interactive from the, the user or the customer which will then relay information back through the website, so surveys, competitions. Yeah, sure. We already support it. As uh, I told, the RL is a just HTML uh, page placed on top of the augmented uh, or the camera. So you can place there uh, any HTML content like buttons. You can interact with JavaScript. You can also make Ajax or asynchronous calls to your server, which could be your backend could be any PHP or whatever, so you can also sends results to your server 
get results back, and you can interact the, with the user. So uh, at the beginning, I said that we had an experience with a TV channel in Germany. They showed on the screen at a certain moment, they showed uh, like a pattern. So the user could scan this pattern with the phone. And there was three questions that the user could click. And this result was sent to the server. So you can have uh, an overall, uh, all the results that you can see that the user pl uh, clicked or whatever. Yeah? Thank you. Any other questions? Um, another question then is um, monetization. Is does it cost the user to to use your service? Okay, for the user it's free. For the developer, uh, the Medallo SDK is free with a watermark and a splash screen at the beginning. But you can purchase a license to remove this watermark and this splash screen. So if you are, while you are developing, you don't have to buy anything. You can develop with the tools for free. Uh, Junayo is also free. So for instance, the Penguin navigation was using Junayo, so they didn't have to pay anything. Okay. Yeah. But the user has to install Junayo and then open their channel. Yeah. But if you use the Metaio SDK, you can use your own application. You it's your own brand. And you can, from the Metaio creator, you can export the scene not to Junayo, but also to your own application. So you have like a template. Yeah. So yeah. for the user, they don't have to pay anything, but the developer they can pay to have more space on the cloud or to remove the watermark. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? No? OK. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And I will be around here. So if you want to see more demonstrations or ask more questions, I will be around here for a while. Thank you.